Hi, I'm Nathan Wood. I'm the Vice President and General Manager of Synthetic Biology here at Life Technologies. Hi, my name is Todd Peterson. I'm the Vice President of Research and Development for the Synthetic Biology Business Unit here at Life Technologies. Synthetic biology is the next evolution of genomics and proteomics. In the life science industry, it provides solutions to them so that they can do their experiments in more of a rational purpose or rational design, so they don't have as much repetitive experiments that they have to do and they can get to their answer quickly. Synthetic biology is a, is a new scientific discipline. It's at the intersection of life sciences, uh, the information sciences, and the engineering disciplines. And it's basically the engineering of living systems or the components of living systems for uh, useful purposes. There's a number of different applications uh, for synthetic biology. Researchers can use synthetic biology to figure out how to optimize organisms for specific applications. They can actually speed up their research so they don't have to do the routine proteomics and, and genomics research so that they can do their research faster. For example, they can make an antibody through synthetic biology that has a higher expression level. There's a large number of applications that span from the basic research space, that is uh, the understanding and the building of living systems um, so that the processes, the underlying metabolic processes and so forth in cells, there's a higher level of understanding of those, that's more in the research space. There's many uh, so-called vertical applications as well of the technology. This is especially um, well known at the moment in the field of chemicals and biofuels, for example. This is the engineering of cells and living systems, a wide variety of organisms to make uh, specialty chemicals or even bulk chemicals as well as fuels. I haven't mentioned, I think, one key thing which is how it can actually improve the medicine that we have. So through synthetic biology, you can actually have quicker productions of vaccines. Response time that we can have when there's an outbreak of a disease or a pandemic can be much faster. In terms of fuel, I think that everybody knows when they go um, and stand in line at the gas station and so forth and pay $4, it's or more uh, you know, per gallon, and in some places in the world it's almost double that at the moment. Uh, we have uh, finite uh, reserves for, uh, let's say, petroleum products, which includes gasoline as well as diesel. So there's a, there's, there's a big opportunity in terms of the petrochemical space and fuels where we can leverage sunlight and other um, sources of energy to fix carbon into uh, liquid fuels then that basically power, uh, power the planet. Yeah, we do it in two methods. One is first, we're building out the world's largest tools, toolbox for synthetic biology. So this toolbox allows researchers to pick the synthetic biology kits that they want to use and then use those in their research. In a sense, what we're doing here at Life Technologies is exactly what ABI and Invitro did in the past to genomics and proteomics, where we're putting them in kits so people can use those tools for their work. In addition, what we do is there's folks um, in the marketplace that want to contract with us to do that work for them. So we'll use our kits for them in our service labs and then provide them the solution. A great example of how we supply our applied customers is an industrial enzyme company, for example, could send us a protein that they want to improve the performance of that protein. We'll make all the variations to that protein and then send that protein back to them so that they can screen all those variants and decide which protein is most effective to go into their industrial product.